Good morning or afternoon, depending on which class you're in. I'm out today because I've thrown my back out and I'm going to have to go to the doctor this morning, but I'm going to try to give you your notes today through this video. So on Google Classroom, you'll find this video and another assignment that has the presentation. You're going to take the notes in the presentation as I go along here. Um, first, I want to discuss the test and the corrections. Um, the test is open so you can make your corrections on a separate piece of paper. Make sure your names are on it and the num and number the corrections that you're making. In the future, after the semester, I'm not going to allow test corrections anymore, so you're going to have to step your game up um, and make sure you understand the material and are able to take the test and pass them the first time around. Today we're going to start chemical bonding. You're going to need to Open the notes presentation on Google Classroom. You'll be filling this out during the during this video. And you're going to have to have P table open um, also during this time because we're going to be doing some calculations using that. And if you make sure there's a link right on Google Classroom, click that and it should take you to this table. And you need to have the elect need that be the properties tab and have the electronegativity little button checked so it looks like this. We're going to use that later today. I'm not going to go full screen with the notes because I have to type on them so you can take the notes as we go along. Um, the first thing is a warm-up. What happens when an atom gains or loses electrons? Um, cations are formed when an atom loses electrons and becomes positively charged. And you probably can guess now that an anion occurs when an atom gains electrons and becomes negatively charged. And if you have to pause the video f as we go through this, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to try to go through it as quickly as possible, so you will need to pa pause it to take your notes. So a cation, that's a positive ion, and an anion is a negative ion. And so we're moving to chemical bonding, and that's how, when two or more atoms bond together to form a compound. Why do atoms bond? Each atom wants a full outer electron shell and that means they want to be they have to gain or lose electrons to be um, happy as we call it they all want to look like a the the noble gas that's closest to them and this rule is called the octet rule and that means they want to have eight electrons in their outermost shell. And that means two in the P or two in the S shell and two in the and six in the P shell. And we'll I'll go over this again tomorrow, but for right now you want the number is eight. Everybody wants to be happy by having eight electrons in the outer shell. This gives each atom an electron configuration to that similar to that of a noble gas. So that's that's the main thing is to remember eight is our number that we want to be concerned about. And in order to do that, electrons need to be lost or gained. They want to look like the closest noble gas to them. 
there's two types of chemical bonds. One's called covalent, which where they share electrons, and ionic, where they will either gain or lose electrons and then be attracted oppositely because in sodium chloride, which is salt right here, the sodium becomes positively charged, the chlorine negatively charged, and opposites attract, so they stick together. Covalent bonding is a result of sharing of bonds. Sharing of electrons, sorry. Le covalent bondings share electrons. And there's two types of sharing. There are two types of bonds, covalent bonds, nonpolar and polar. Where there's equal sharing, it's considered they are considered a nonpolar bond. That means there's they equally share not one end is not stronger than the other. Where there's unequal sharing, it becomes a polar. One pulls on the other more than the than the other. So like here, chlorine is the stronger of the elements, it's pulling harder, so the the bond tends to skew this direction, and then that's called a polar covalent bond. So once again, covalent bonds share electrons. If they share equally, they're called nonpolar covalent. If they unequally share, they're polar covalent. Which brings us next to ionic bond. There's no sharing here. They actually gain or lose electrons. or lose. There's an actual gain or loss of electrons. These form when a cation, which we just talked about in the warm-up, a positive charged ion, and an anion join. So positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion join. The results from the opposite attraction between the cations and the anions. Opposite attraction or charges between the cation and the anions. Don't forget you can pause this as you go along so you can keep up. Now, what type of bond will form? The key to this is electronegativity. Electronegativity is the key, and you have this chart, and you'll see this in a few minutes. On P table, they, each, each element has its own electronegativity value, and you'll need to use this table and this chart to predict your bond, bond types. And we'll do an example here. So we go to hydrogen, a hydrogen, hydrogen. Hydrogen and all the other gases like to be paired up with another of their same species. So hydrogen, hydrogen, nitrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen. And so what we have to do now is what type of bond will form? We have to go find the electronegativity of hydrogen and hydrogen. So we go to our P table and we come over here to find hydrogen. And the, the number underneath the word hydrogen says 2.20. 
that is its electronegativity. So you come back and you put in 2.20 minus 2.20 and that equals zero. That's the electronegativity difference. Then we go back to our chart which is at the bottom of the last slide and we find that this is a pure nonpolar covalent bond because its electronegativity difference is zero. And so we'll call this a nonpolar covalent bond. We'll do the next one here and then I want you to do the um, last two here. Um, we got sulfur and cesium. So we'll go back to our table. Cesium's down here. And if I zoom in, you can see that that's 0.79. We go over to sulfur here. And that is 2.58 electronegativity. So it's a difference. So you always put the larger one first. So we go 2.58 minus 0.79. And that equals, and I have to get my calculator out if I can find it. Otherwise, I'll just go to the one on the, the computer, but we'll look at it real quick and see if I can do it in my head. It's going to be about 1.5. Seven, eight. Check my math, but I think that's what it should work out to be. Um, seven, seven. So we got 18 minus 9, which is actually 8. Reduce this by 1, so 4. 14 minus 7, 7. So this should be the correct number, but check it on your own calculator. I can't find mine right now. So if we go to 1.79, um, it's roughly, it's very close to the 2.0 mark here, which would make it ionic, but it, it's right up over here. And so that is called a polar covalent bond. And so what you need to do is do this for the rest of them. Um, the sulfur and the chlorine, go back to your P table. We already know the sulfur, chlorine's right next to it. Chlorine is 3.16, sulfur is 2.58, do the subtraction. And then sulfur and hydrogen, go back to your P table. And hydrogen's 2.2. And sulfur's 2.58 but I, what I really want you to do is make sure I did this math right and that we have a polar covalent bond. Moving on to the next slide, um, breaking bonds requires energy. You have to put energy in to break a bond. It, you just can't um, do it um, without energy. And it's as simple as this and I don't know if you can still see me on the camera hook two fingers together in order to pull your fingers apart you have to put energy in you have to put energy in to break the bond forming energy releases or forming bonds releases energy and I guess I should use a different color than yellow this, uh, this energy is called, obviously, it's two words, we're bond energy. If you were taught that breaking bonds releases energy, then they were a little mistaken. And we're not going to worry about that right now, but just re remember, re breaking a bond requires energy, forming bonds releases energy. And one couple of analogies, the same as if you're losing energy and relaxing on your couch, forming bonds releases energy. 
It's the same as if you're relaxing on your couch and your parents is asking you to study, but prefer relaxing and watching TV rather than studying. It takes your parents screaming to get you to do do it. Breaking bonds takes energy. They're putting energy into you to get you off the couch. The best example I can think of is fireworks. The fuse inputs energy in order to start the reaction. The light, heat, and sound given off are the elements going to their lowest energy state, actually coming back and reforming. Tomorrow we'll review some of this and then we'll talk about Lewis structures and how we show bonds on paper. And I'll fix this and we'll cover that tomorrow. So thank you for listening. Make sure you've done this. Go do your um, test corrections and that's it for today.